When you think of the state of Alabama, you think Southern hospitality, college football, Hank Williams and Muscle Shoals. Unless speed is your thing, spotlight on the Arca Menard Series, the race, the General Tire 200, the place Alabama's house of speed. This is Talladega. And this is Phil Parsons, a man who's seen it all, done it all in a stock car. I am Dave Reef, and Phil, as this racetrack turns 50, the Menards, Arkham Menard Series has been a part of it the entire time. You've seen many incredible finishes, just like the one we saw here one year ago. Yeah, it's amazing some of the finishes that we've had at this racetrack. But when we take a look back at last year, look how many cars are in contention for the win here. Oh, four of About them. ten cars in contention for the win. Look at this battle right up front. Zane Smith on the inside. Joe Graff Jr. on the outside. Look how close it was. You see what's at stake for you perhaps tonight? That's why we're going to watch so very intently. It is a restrictor plate race. Anybody could win, but there are some drivers, Phil, that you have your eyes on. Oh, there really are. There's about 15 drivers, I think, capable of winning, but Todd Gillen is one of the guys I want to keep my eye on. This youngster, a Truck Series regular, finished second at Daytona to start the year in the Arca Series. Travis Braden, he's our point leader. He's going to start from the 14th uh, sure. position, trying to extend that point lead. Michael Self going for three in a row. He's going to start from the top five and fifth, and Ty Majeski, short track case was second the last time he was in an ARCA car in 2017. Hey, it's time to light some fires and kick some tires. The command to start as we go trackside. GMC Cadillac, Toby Hill. <laughs> Drivers, start your engines. Twenty-six cars on this 2.6-mile racetrack. Get the butterflies out of the stomach. Find your focus. Perhaps you have maybe a spirit animal. That's our general tire driver profile question. We asked our Arkham and Art Series drivers this week, what is your spirit animal? I'd like to say a cheetah. A cheetah. I don't know, maybe a cheetah. Uh, probably a turtle. They don't move around a lot or don't do a lot, you know. They're just gonna chill out and sleep and don't bother anybody most of the time. I think like a bald eagle, like a just a nice little bald eagle sitting on top of a tree, just a proud look right there. That's like me. I like that look. Definitely a lion. With the red hair, I got the mane flowing. I'm already halfway there. A sloth for sure. Because I am cute and cuddly. People want to pet me, but all I have to do is sleep and eat. That sounds spot on for me. Yeah, it has to be an elephant because they remember everything, and I think I remember everything. They live for a very long time. That's my goal, live for a very long time and remember everything. <laughs> Let's face it, there were a lot of good answers there, but, but Gus Dean wants to be a sloth? I'm not going to be a turtle, that's for sure. And, and you know what? Nobody said the hair because it <laughs> didn't work out very well for the hair either. <laughs> hey, we'll be back as the countdown to the green flag of the General Tire 200 continues at the Talladega Super Speedway. Don't go anywhere. Formerly the Aniston Air Force Base. What a beautiful night for racing the General Tire 200 here at Talladega, Alabama. It looks sun-drenched. It is, but take a look at the wind out there. Let's talk a little weather, Phil. Yeah, what a beautiful day, though. 74 degrees. You see that wind. It gusts over that 11 miles an hour, but our forecast is for no rain. Beautiful today, but two weeks ago in Salem, let's just say things had a soggy finish. But if... Michael Self has a spirit animal. It's got to be that dinosaur on the side of his car. He dominated. Yeah, great battle there. Passes the pole sitter, Carson Hosever. But we get a little bit of rain right before the halfway point. When it's all said and done, how about Michael Self going back to back to victory lane and in the process, getting himself to within five points of the points leader. Who is that point leader? We're about to find out as we take a look at the points page. It's Travis Braden that is your leader. So Brett Holmes comes into third, but... The big question is, what happened to Christian Eckes? We didn't even see him in the Sunday Salem finale. Yeah, he got a little, got, uh, had a bit of a of illness and was not able to run that race. They brought in Harrison Burton to run that race. You see Harrison down seventh in points. The fellow Chandler Smith, Harrison Burton, Ty Gibbs, not entered here at Talladega. Good news for Christian Eckes. Healthy once again and darn glad to be back in the race car as Dylan Welch found out pit side just a few moments ago. And guys, Christian Eckes rolling off from the 12th spot this evening. Uh, Probably just glad to be back in the car after a little medical scare there at uh, Salem. First of all, how are you feeling? Yeah, I feel fine now. Um, you know, obviously it was a little bit of a rough week there, but uh, you know, I'm back 100% healthy and 
Um, you know, the biggest thing is I lost a little strength, but you know, it's, it's all right. I'll gain that back fast. And uh, yeah, just really excited to race with JBL Camry tonight. Uh, you know, obviously 12th wasn't really where we wanted to be. Um, just kind of looking to draw with the group qualifying and stuff like that. But I think we have a really, really fast uh, JBL Camry. And, uh, hopefully we'll be able to drive to the front. And you've got two really, really fast teammates as well. When the three of you get linked up together, how much confidence that does that give you or just reassurance with all three of you guys knowing how good you are? Yeah, you know, all Venery Motorsports has brought three really fast cars here to uh, Talladega. And, uh, you know, I think even if we go to the back, I still think that there's a strategy there if we all get, you know, in a little bit of a trouble that we can go to the back and we can drive back through. So, you know, it's comforting having that, you know, kind of exit strategy in, in the back of my mind. But, um, you know, hopefully we can bring a top three home for Venturini tonight. He's been one of the best cars all year long and I have to work from the middle of the pack tonight here at Talladega. Sickness that came on so fast, he tore his esophagus. Four days in the hospital, though, mm. he's back here ready to race. Let's talk about our general tire pull award winner. Happens to be the driver of the 20 car, Brandon Lynn. What a nice job here. Group qualifying for these Arca Menards cars. He did a nice job laying back a little bit, got that little bit of a run, that momentum that took him to the pole. Well, now it's time for our General Tire 200 starting grid and starting alongside of Brandon Lynn, the man you talked about a little bit earlier, Ty Majeski, just added this week. He'll race five other times this year. As Andy Sice, Gus Dean, a former winner, make up row number two. Yeah, really strong field up here. A lot of guys did a nice job in this group qualifying. We had five different groups of five cars each qualifying. We've got three former winners in the field as we begin to pair our way back right now. You've got Brandon McReynolds back inside of a car. Gus Dean, and of course, the man who's been doing it longer than most, Bobby Gerhardt, who will start way back in the 17th spot. Yeah, Bobby's a former winner here. Won eight times at the sister track at Daytona. Be surprised to see that Natalie Decker struggled in qualifying just a little bit. You'll see her name pop up here in row number 10 in a few moments. Yeah, see, back in row number eight, though, uh, the two cars that, that are really competitive here, Todd Gillen and Brett Holmes. There's Natalie Decker right there in row number 10. 26 strong. Wait till you see the paint scheme on Ed Pompa's car. If you're from Alabama, you may take a little bit of offense to it. If you know anything about his history, well, you might have an idea what's on the side of that car. We'll show you in just a little bit as it's time to catch up with our onboard cameras. We got five of them tonight, Phil. Yeah, this is Brett Holmes. This is the general tire on board. This is a home game for Brett Holmes. He goes to Auburn University. He grew up 10 minutes from this racetrack. He starts from the 16th spot. Carrying our Matrix Care onboard cameras. The driver, 27, that'll start ninth. Travis Braden, who says the best is yet to come. The points leader says he doesn't even have a great car yet, but it's coming. <laughs> How about Joe Graff? Just inches away from that win last year. He's in the Fast Kids Club Ford for Chad Bryant. He will be starting from the ninth spot. Starting in position uh, number six, it's the Orca Coolers onboard camera. Riley Erbst, anytime this Monster Energy machine shows up, it's one to keep your eyes on. How about Riley? Check it in now, the ripe old age of 20. <laughs> We're going to ride along with our 2016 winner. That's Gustine, the new Calgon on board. That's the Chevrolet. He will be starting from the fourth spot. Well, let's check in quickly with Dylan Welch one more time. Well, and guys, uh, we always talk about Talladega and, and racetracks like Talladega being a great equalizer for smaller teams, teams that don't have the budget to compete at the highest level week in and week out. Don't count out teams like our motorsports. Their driver, Andy Sykes, C.J. McLaughlin, both ran well here in the past, ran well here last year in at Daytona as well. So just something to keep in mind that we shouldn't be surprised sometimes to see teams like these up at the front at the end of the day. Thanks a lot, Dylan. It'll be interesting to keep our eyes on that. Time now for our Bounty Rookie Spotlight that will be on Thad Moffat, the fourth-generation driver looking to do something only Richard Petty has done. Win here in Talladega. Daytona, little inauspicious. Some success, some struggle. Yeah, really ran well. He had, had trouble early on with a window net coming down. Certainly not his fault. That was an unscheduled pit stop, but he was able to get back in the lead lap in contention until he had this flat tire. With 10 to go, you can best believe he was very disappointed. A man who said he'd be in extreme sports, loves to go snowboarding, but he didn't like to go around in circles there as he ultimately ended up finishing 26. But a chance right now at Daytona, or at Talladega rather, to get a little redemption. And the car sure looks like his grandfather's a little bit, doesn't it? The and red he, and blue. Yep, he went, spent a lot of time in the shop this week, did that wrap entirely by himself, took a lot of pride in it as well as he should. It looks great. You can see Tommy Vi does lead the Bounty Rookie Challenge point standings. Good news for Christian Eckes and everybody else back. They take the 15 best finishes of the year, so this thing's still wide open. Uh, without a doubt. 
Well, it is time now for the green flag of the General Tire 200. But a unique starting position here in Talladega. The starting line isn't in the middle of the trioval. It's more back on turn number one. Yeah, all our, all our race fans, our Arkham Menards race fans, realize here at Talladega that the start finish line is almost in turn number one here. That creates a lot of those great finishes we get here. 26 cars, it's time to go green around this 2.66 mile track. Brandon Lynn, Ty Majeski. They're in the start zone and they are on the loud pedal and away we go at Talladega. Brandon Lynn opting to start on the outside has got a nice jump and he'll settle into that bottom groove and lead him into turn one. Got a little bit of a push from the 32 of Gustine. Now he's going to drop down to the inside in front of the 22 of Majeski. Look at Riley Earps, the 18 car. That's the monster machine already up into third. Riley starting sixth, cut his deficit in half, and we barely got to the back stretch. Yeah, Riley is sharing that ride this year with Ty Gibbs, the grandson of Coach Joe Gibbs. But already you see that outside line led by the 32 of Gustine gaining a little bit of momentum. This is the kind of racing we expect to see here without, all day long. Without a doubt, there's the 43 of Sean Core. He's going to pull up on the rear bumper of that car on the outside. It looks like they may have a slight advantage. Gustine now with just a slight edge over Brandon Lynn. Who will go in the books as the official leader of lap number one? We're about to find out as they get closer to turn one. It looks like the photo pace finish. Flag. We've seen the photo finish before. <laughs> and it's Gus D by four ten thousandths of a second. Remember, Dave, when I said we probably had about 15 potential winners. Well, there's about uh, almost the entire field right now in this lead pack. They're 19 within a second of each other. You see some of the cars starting to fall off the pace. But that lead pack is going strong right now, led by the outside line and Gus Dean. Behind him, Thad Moffitt, again, proving it is in the jeans, the Penny jeans, the fourth generation racer. The Arkham Menards officials keeping a very close eye, making sure these cars don't do a lot of bumping. Yeah, they can do a little bit of bumping. They can't lock on, though. There they can't go. do that tandem, but. Gustine has pulled out to a nice little lead. He could pull down to the inside if he wanted to, but he may stay out there with Sean Core, the guy that helped him get the lead. On board with the 23 car. It's Brett Holmes, Alabama, Talladega County native. Guarantee he's got a whole host of folks pulling for him tonight. Was talking about how important a win would be here at his home racetrack. He used to race across the street at the dirt track all the time against people like Red Farmer. He and his dad at the Talladega short track. Well, wouldn't it be cool if they were racing later tonight? Mm -hmm. There's some of that pushing a little bit. That's Grant Quinlan, the 30 car. He had a great run at Daytona with a top five finish for Mark Rett and Terry Jones. There's Christian Eckes, fourth car in line on the outside, that white number 15 car. You know, these laps feel good for Christian Eckes after what he Absolutely. told Dylan about being out of the car at Salem. On board with Riley Earps, he's been shuffled back to seventh, but you can go from sixth to third, back to eighth, up to second, in a heartbeat here at Talladega. Without a doubt, they haven't put anyone in a compromising position yet. Get them hung in the middle. Now we've got, uh, they look like Natalie Decker trying to form a line on the outside, making a three, and a nice Todd Gillen with Thad Moffitt behind him on the outside. You saw that 30 car trying to make some ground on the outside. We talked about Grant Quinlan, the Ontario native. Scheduled to be his only race, so you know he wants to make it a good one. A good one, perhaps, can get a little bit more sponsorship yeah. dollar. May lead to some more races. Absolutely. Race scheduled to be 76 laps long. They're coming by now to complete lap number four. Gus Dean has been the leader since the start in the 32, but how about Sean Corr? Scored in the number two spot. That's the 43 machine, Thad Moffitt's teammate. Brandon Lynn staying tight there on the bottom, right next to the double yellow line. Remember, you cannot go below that double yellow line to advance your position. Now we got some three wide racing going on. There's Moffitt who got shuffled back trying to get past Decker. Now we're racing for fun. Now there is that compromise. Oh, oh. contact. Gus Dean got hung in the middle, made a little bit of contact with Grant Quinlan in that 30 car. So for those of us that have never experienced pack racing like this, 
How is Talladega different from Daytona? There's just a little bit more room. It's it's a little more wide open here. The trial was quite a bit wider. The, the trial at Daytona is a turn. Right here, it's just pretty much a flat, wide open part of the racetrack. And then you have a little bit more room in the corners here. A little more forgiving here at this racetrack. The second with Dylan Welch with more on Todd Gilliland. a little bit more forgiving. The spotters still play a critical role. For Todd Gilliland, he's got Eddie DeHaan up top this evening, which is the first time those two have worked together. And it was funny listening to Todd talk about the first time that he heard Eddie come on the radio. Eddie's got a very distinct Boston uh, Northeastern accent. And uh, Todd, it said, took him by surprise just because he's never actually met Eddie. He's only heard him. So uh, a veteran spotter, accomplished spotter, worked with Jeff Gordon for many years. And it uh, is paying off so far this weekend. Todd's felt a lot more comfortable just having a voice like Eddie who really understands how to work the draft, where to be, where to get your car to go on the racetrack. Todd says that's helped him immensely, and he's going to need it coming from middle of the pack here this evening. Got a veteran there spotting. Got a veteran in his father who you saw in the box, bottom left of your screen just a little bit ago. Yeah, Eddie DeHunt is a newlywed as well. He got married hey, in the last week that? or so. Congratulations to you. Well, it is Sean Core in the 43 car, the Chevrolet that leads as we continue racing here. The General Tire 200 working lap seven. There is a six car single file breakaway here at Talladega as we continue racing in the General Tire 200. Sean Core continues to lead as Brandon Lynn, Ty Majewski goes second and third right now. We stay under green, but Phil, we almost had our first caution. We had a really anxious moment. Look at the bottom of your screen. That's Joe Graff Jr. trying to really help Michael Self. A little bit of bump drafting going. Remember, you can't lock on, but you can bump. But it gets them sideways, gets them out of shape, and it gets them down below the double yellow line. Here's another look at this. is from Joe Grant's car. Watch the bumps here. And it's going to turn Michael sideways. And I think at this point, Michael said, okay, I, I'm good with that for now. Spent a lot of time talking with Michael in Daytona. And again, yesterday, back in the pits, he's a points racer, does not want to have happen what did in Daytona again here. So very mindfully said, you know what, I'm going to take the safe route out, try to make my way back up. Was ninth, got knocked down already to 21st. 28 car is on pit road right now. That is Brandon McReynolds. His dad, of course, Larry McReynolds, an Alabama native. That's the ABM machine this weekend. A little early for a scheduled pit stop, it's wouldn't you say? Definitely not a scheduled pit stop. Definitely unscheduled for Brandon. Joe Graff Jr. right now currently runs in the seventh spot. Big news for him coming just a few hours ago. Got an opportunity to work with Richard Childress Racing, not only getting an Xfinity opportunity coming up later this year, perhaps a couple. He's going to work in the marketing and communications department. And that's what he's studying up at NYU. That's right. What a great opportunity for Joe Graff, and what a great opportunity to jump in one of those RCR cars in the Xfinity Series. He's got to be absolutely pinching himself. Got a good ride right here. This is the Fast Kids Club on board here and have to get out of the throttle there as the, as the closing rate was really quick on the 30 of Grant Quinlan. What is the Fast Kids Club, the designated youth division of his primary sponsor, Eat Sleep Race, an apparel company. He'd like to eat his way all the way up to the front right now, Graff <laughs> Jr. sitting in the number seven position. Todd Gillen's going to jump out of the line to the outside, move alongside the 77 of Joe Graff Jr. Looked like a position he was going to be able to gain, but maybe that door closed, and he'll have to settle back into this now nine-car single-file freight train. Probably not a bad idea just to drop at the back of that line right here. Just ride along now. Let's just log some laps right now. Absolutely. Let's get an update on the 28 from Dylan. Well, and Dave, the story basically is just that it lost power. The gauges shut off, the engine shut off. They're not really sure what happened. They were asking Brandon if the car was pushing water, if it overheated or anything. He said no, so they're not really sure what exactly happened. He came down pit road and just kind of did a pass through, didn't stop or come to a complete stop in his box, and they told him just to keep going, and uh, they're going to try and figure out if they can uh, dis or, uh, dis decide what the issue is on the 28 car. Phil, what can you do from the cockpit? Well, there's really nothing he can do if the thing does indeed lose power and shut off then he has to recycle the switches and uh, and the fuel pumps in that uh, electronic fuel injection system.
Gilliland with another run in the four car looking to the high side of Graf trying to get that position. But again, no takers as far as helping him out on the backside. Still a learning experience for a young man that has shown a lot of speedway prowess. Look up at that battle from the 32 car, Gus Dean, the new Calgon onboard camera. Gus Dean, one of the three winners we have in the field here. Cars trucking around this racetrack at about 180 mile an hour plus. Certainly going faster than that as they put the 06 car a lap down. And that's bad news for Brandon McReynolds. Brandon McReynolds was in the free pass spot if the caution were to come out. Now the 06 of Cotton Nicolopolis is. So all that battling for position has allowed the top six to spread out now. Yeah, that really cost uh, Joe Graff Jr., Todd Gill, and Gus Dean that lead draft, but they may be comfortable running their eight or ten car lengths behind this lead pack. Sean Core in the 43 races for the Empire Sports team. He's got a teammate, Thad Moffitt, talking with him, says, you know, he'd love to be able to get hooked up with Thad and work together as a tandem, but Thad right now is back in the 13th spot. Working on lap 15 now of 76 as we get a look at the Eat Sleep Race Driver, Joe Graff Jr. Some exciting news earlier, an Xfinity ride coming his way. But he had to gather up that 77, almost getting it turned here in Talladega. Back in a moment. It is New York State Dirt Modified Racer Sean Core, the 43, that continues to pace the field here at the General Tire 200. He's led 13 laps as that single file freight train is still in full effect, Phil. But one car we have yet to talk about is the guy running right now in the fifth spot. That's Hampstead, New Hampshire's Andy Sice. Yeah, he's no stranger to running well here at Talladega. He had a run or finish here back in 2017. Had a top 10 at Daytona, so he's a good restrictor plate racer. He's normally a modified racer. He's a couple times Southern modified champion, but uh, doing a nice job here at Talladega. A couple of lap cars, 69 machine. That's Scott Melton. Tense moment there for that front pack. Yeah, these guys can just be in the line, everything going fine, but when they get to lap cars, that's when business really picks up. They were able to negotiate their way around him. You see, Gustini has yet to get around those two lap cars. Everybody else has made their way around him. Quinlan and Graf go to the top side. Now the 30 driver ducks back inside. And at the moment, it looks like the 77 has hung out. We'll see if the fourth Todd Gillen wants to jump up there and go with Joe Graf or just close that hole up. Looks like that's what he's going to do. He's going to stay in line with the 0-2 of Andy Sice. 19 laps now completed. We have 57 to go. Core continuing to lead. Natalie Decker in the 54 has made a 10-position improvement since the start. Haven't said her name much, but she's making some hay in the back of this field. Yeah, she's leading that second back. They're about six seconds behind, about seven seconds behind our leader. There she is in the 54 car. Brett Holmes to 23. There's Travis Braden, a 27 right behind her. About about seven seconds behind our leader. Our sprint car racer, Frankie Kerr. Cup crew chief. Man, who's a very, very smart man. I'm going to ask you a quick question, Phil. Is there such a thing as a patient race car driver because patience is a big key. I heard it from a lot of them back in the pits. So I think without a doubt you see a lot of those guys running in that lead packer patient. Look at this is what I was talking about when you're trying to lap by these cars here. You see Gustine had to go all the way down on the apron to avoid that car. I don't think that would result in a penalty. You cannot no. advance your position, but he was just trying to avoid that lap car. The 11 car was D.L. Wilson out of Waco, Texas. But like right now, Brandon Lynn, Ty Majeski, uh, Riley Herbs all showing a lot of patience, just running in line now, just logging these laps. There'll be plenty of time to mix it up when we get towards the end. Look to the inside, down below that yellow line, no pass for Majeski. Perhaps an opportunity to get some clean air in the grill. Look at the front stretch a moment ago. We were talking about with D.L. Wilson. That's the red car in the middle of a freight train. Yeah, that's a situation where we're really not aware of where those fastest cars are. The best thing to do is just hold your line. Just stay in one lane. The, the faster guys will figure out a way around you. But when you start changing lanes, that, that's when it gets a little bit too exciting. Great look from the onboard camera as the shadows now start to settle on to the tri-oval. Core, who's led 17 consecutive laps. Gus Dean led the first four. 
But Dean has been shuffled back to the eighth spot. Joe Graff will look you right on board with him around the high banks. This looks like a very fast car for Chad Ryan Racing. You saw him pull up on the tailgate on the back bumper. Tailgate, I'm used to talking about trucks. On the back bumper of the fourth, Todd Gillen. That car really has some great closing speed. If he gets behind a little bit, we saw him lose the draft. He was about a second behind and was able to close that gap up in about a, in about a lap or so. So a lot of speed in that 77 car. Asked you just a moment ago about patience. Dylan Welch has more as he's been listening in on the communication with Natalie Decker's team. What are they saying? Well, and Dave, we talked so much, too, and we've talked already today about how the importance of a veteran spotter can help some of these young drivers. That's exactly what Natalie Decker has in the form of Kevin Hamlin, who works on Sundays with Alex Bowman. He's telling her basically just to stay in line and that he's trying to work with other spotters up top to go with her to try and move this, this second pack back towards the front. So if everybody's scattered and trying to race each other, they're not going to gain any ground. But if they can stay in a single file line and help each other out, then they're going to gain more time. So that's the message that's being stressed to Natalie right now. Just be patient. We're going to try to get some more cars to help you here, and then maybe we'll get back up towards the front. Now yeah, there's a race on the track. There's a chess match going on on the top of the roof with all the spotters as well. See Todd Gillen in the four car trying to make another move around the outside of the 30 of Grant Quinlan. Joe Graff is going to stay on the inside with the 30 of Grant Quinlan. They can't run side by side for too long or they'll lose that draft of those cars in front of them running single file. Great look from the onboard of Joe Graff. The man who was the runner up in the closest ARCA finish ever here one year ago. Right now he finds himself in the seventh position on the general tire leaderboard on the left side of your screen. Looking for more here. And everybody looking up at the front, seeing the 43 of Sean Core continue to lead the general tire 200. We'll be back in a moment as the high speed hijinks continue here in Talladega. In just two days, NASCAR will be on the legendary Talladega Super Speedway for the wildest race of the year as Hamlin, Bush, Elliott, Logano battle for the top of the standings while also trying to avoid the big one the geico 500 sunday fox race day begins at 1 30 with the green flag two eastern on fox sean core continues to lead brandon lynn continues to run second in the 20 car it's still the 22 time majeski in third not much has changed there you see the white 28 car on the outside that's brandon mcreynolds he is now two laps down Ouch. after that issue we had when he lost power, he really needs to get in front of this entire group for when the caution would to come out, because only be one lap down. Being two laps down, there's hardly any chance that he would be able to get the free pass. 27 green flag laps. They saw the first one. They've stayed green the entire time, and Sean Corr has now led 23 laps. Meanwhile, we, we talked a little bit about Natalie Decker, she's fallen off the pace now from being scored 16th. Michael Self go, going for three in a row has scored 17th. Both those racers about a half a lap off the pace now. Yeah, Michael Self actually now is 28 seconds behind. Natalie's in a little bit of a pocket by herself. She's about eight seconds behind the car in front of her and five seconds in front of Michael Self. It probably won't be long because Michael Self has a couple of other cars he's running with right now. They'll chase her down in just a matter of a few laps, I would think. So we continue to watch this lead pack. Let's talk a little bit now, Phil, about race strategy. I know those guys are a half a lap back, but they want to keep the pace. You never know when a yellow could come out. And of course, there's going to be a pit stop somewhere. Yeah, you just want to stay in the lead lap. And I think right now, they're probably in their window that they would come down pit road. The, you could probably go somewhere between 45 and 50 laps on a take of fuel. Right now, they're, they're with 48 laps to go. They feel like they would be in their window. They could make it from here if the caution were to come out. And obviously, that would close up the rest of the field for Absolutely. Michael Self and Natalie Decker and put them right back in contention. Top 20 right now are on the lead lap. And now Decker is off the pace, ducking below the yellow line, no doubt coming to pit road. Yeah, she must have had an issue as why she lost that second pack, why she found herself 23 seconds behind. Dylan, what's going on with the 54 car? 
Well, they thought that it was a, an electrical issue a few laps ago, and they told her to just keep running it and see if it got any better. Well, it hasn't. It's gotten worse. So as you can see, they're headed on the pit road to try and diagnose exactly what the issue is under the hood. Disappointment for Decker, but she will run a very diverse schedule this year. An increased ARCA presence, the truck series. She's also going to be in the K&N series racing Bristol, a Trans Am ride for about five races this year. Incredible schedule. Yeah, she had a great run at Daytona in the ARCA racing series, finished in the sixth spot. And then she had a flat tire that caused her truck to catch on fire on the very first lap of the truck race. But she had a real nice top 15 run at Texas her last time out in the truck. Another lap car in the way. Look on the bottom side of your screen. That's the one machine of Ed Pompa. I told you he had a very unique paint scheme for the second consecutive time after Clemson beat Alabama in the National Collegiate Football Final. He comes to Alabama with Clemson colors on the side of his car. Yeah, that's kind so of... Because he loves the spirited words he hears. Yeah, that's kind of rubbing in their face, I think, a little bit. Fortunately, though, the race not going very well for him right now. As the Boston Spa New York native falls a lap down. He is in the free pass position right now, and the next car that to get lapped is over 20 seconds ahead of our leader, so he's in a pretty good spot right now if, uh, if he can just hold that spot. On board with Riley Herb, or Ty, excuse me, Riley Herbs, riding in the fourth spot. The top four have basically remained unchanged for a number of laps now. It's the 43, the 20 of Lynn, the 22 of Majeski, and this 18 driver. Yeah, you talk about a diverse schedule. Riley's going to run the the Xfinity Series for Joe Gibbs Racing a handful of times this year, as well as run some trucks for probably KBM. So uh, a nice schedule for Riley Herbs, guy that's run full time in the Arca Series for the last couple of years. That's our Orca onboard camera driver. Staying in line, staying patient here. We are working now lap 32. And I just a moment ago looked behind the 18 car and see that Todd Gilliland is on a run. He's being scored now in six, trying to get around Papa. Here comes the frontline Enterprises, Camry. Yeah, it's amazing that in, in 30 laps, we can lap the one car, but then once they get to him, he can stay right with our leaders. That's what the draft does here at Talladega. Being told from the pits that is a fuel pickup problem for the 54 of Natalie Decker. That's going to take her right out of contention, being shown right now three laps behind. Approaching the halfway point of the general tire 200. Unfortunately, Natalie Decker sits on the pit road with problems here in Talladega. Driver of the 43, Sean Core, has increased to 31 as the top four have remained the same. But there is a second line starting to develop as we welcome you back to the General Tire 200. It is led by former race winner here, Gus Dean. Let's look a little further back. Yeah, they're about 19 seconds behind our leader. There's Joe Graff right there. He lost that lost lead as Graff, he was trying yeah. to get by the one of Ed Papa. We look all the way back here. There's that second pack, Gus Dean. Andy Sice, remember, we we're up with that lead pack just a few moments ago. That's how quickly you can lose ground when you lose that lead pack. They backed away all the way up to the second pack. There's Brett Holmes, the 23. Travis Braden, the 27 car. On board with Brett Holmes, the general tire on board camera. He has crashed out of the last two races here at Talladega. This is the third place points runner in the series this year. And look at Gilliland looking to get around. Riley Herbst. Yeah, Todd Gillen does not want to just ride around there in line. Nope. He wants to see if he can make something happen. And I like this is a good time to do that, too, because you're not in danger of losing any ground. He has Brandon McReynolds up there, the 28 car. Even though he's two laps down, he still has a very fast race car. Looks like Gillen has a little bit of a dancing partner here for that outside line as well. We're coming up on some lap cars again. Let's see how they negotiate this lap traffic. Looks like Gillen is, is well, Raleigh Herbst moved up the racetrack. I thought Gillen may be able to kind of use that 10 car for a pick, but he moved up, gave Raleigh Herbst some room on the high side in the middle of the racetrack, actually. Is Scott Melton going another lap down. Now he is two laps off the pace. Tommy Vai Jr., current bounty rookie leader in the clubhouse right now. Not a day he wants to have here at Talladega. As he falls two laps off the pace as well. Right along with Raleigh Herbst, the Orca on board. See him edge just ahead of Gillen. 
Gill has tried a number of times to make something happen on the outside and just hasn't been able to, to get enough help, really, to make it work. Meanwhile, Sean Core continues to lead. Had a very interesting conversation with this New York State Dirt Modified racer talking about coming to the Super Speedway for the first time. Said he was struggling with it a little bit. He told a few racers what the problem was, and they all suggested go talk to Ken Schrader. So he went to Schrader, and he says, so, Kenny, I'm doing it like a dirt car. I burp it into the corner. Schrader grabbed him by the shirt and says, you don't ever burp a car <laughs> on a super speedway. You know what you do with your left foot? Put it on top of your right foot. And that's how he learned how to drive this place. That's a really good one to learn from Kenny Schrader, for sure. So as the leader, do you ever get lulled into a false sense of security on a restrictor plate track like this? Right now, Sean Corr is probably looking out of his mirror more than he's looking out of his windshield. Just to make sure that Brandon Lynn doesn't decide to try to make a move. He wants to keep him in the same tracks. And they, their spotters may be working together, too. Brandon Lynn's spotter may tell Sean Corr's spotter, hey, we will stay in line with you no matter what. So then he doesn't have to worry about it. But nonetheless, it's just natural for Sean Corr just to watch that mirror all the time. Brandon Lynn just missing out on a win here in Talladega back in 2017. Led 19 laps, most of them right up to the Ooh. end. But all of a sudden, ran out of gas. Got smoke showing, perhaps under the right front of the 46. That's Thad Moffitt. Yeah, without a doubt, there's some smoke there. I don't see any, any bodywork damage. Could be something coming from the engine or maybe a, a hub. Usually you don't lose a, a right side hub, you lose a left side hub because the grease runs away from the bearings on the left side. It's one of the things he did in addition to wrapping that body, working the shot, getting intimate with his race car. Meanwhile, his teammate continues to lead as we've got action on pit road, and it's happening in a hurry. We'll see if these guys can get down to pit road speed. You see, look at, they all passed Sean Core as they were coming to pit road. There's a six-pack of cars coming at you, Dylan. This is where this race is going to start to take a little different shape. Oh, and he's got one car into the wall. Big-time skid marks. That Moffat is involved. Also, the white car. Looked like maybe Christian Eckes in the 15 car. May have been a situation where they were trying to get to pit road and had an incident. We see that happen so many times. It is Christian Eckes. JBL car. Camry with some big time front end damage. Not sure what came first here, the chicken or the egg. We were documenting Fat Moffitt's troubles. It looks like Christian's got even bigger troubles underneath that hood now. I, I really think these wrecks coming to pit road can be avoided. Throw your hand up, get way over left, get, get below the double yellow line, get out of the way. We'll see what happened in this situation. Both the cars settle into their pit box. We're going to go ahead and take a look back and see what exactly did happen. There's Moffitt in the 43, Eckes right behind him. Oh, it looked like the 46 just suddenly. Got turned to the left. I think everybody in front of him came to pit road. Not sure if Thad was going to come to pit road. He may have turned right to try to avoid those cars coming to pit road. You see, but he got off the throttle for sure when those guys were stopping in front of him. It happens in a hurry when you're traveling at better than 180 miles an hour, and it can end just that quick. We talked about Christian Eckes missing our last race due to an illness. Put himself in a bit of a hole point-wise, and this one's not going to help. So Caution is out on the racetrack as Eckes and Moffitt bring the General Tire 200 to slower conditions. The first twist in the plot of the General Tire 200 has occurred just a few moments ago as Christian Eckes gets into the wall. That Moffitt has problems as well as we begin to sort things out. Phil, we're 42 laps down. Just 34 to go. Perfect place for our Richmond Water Heaters mid-race recap. Been a pretty solid, clean race here up until this green flag pit stop started to occur. You see right off the jump, Brandon Lynn, our pole sitter, jumps into the lead. Wouldn't take long, though, for the 32 car of Gus Dean to take that lead. He would lead the first four laps from his fourth place starting position. But then, all of a sudden, here would come Sean Core in the 43. Yeah, he would lead from this point on until he made their green flag pit stop just a few moments ago. Saw the self. issue for Michael Self got turned sideways by Joe Graff Jr. Knocked him out of that lead draft. Here's another view of it. 
Watch how sideways he gets here. He dropped back to 20 some seconds behind, but this caution flag will bring him right back into play. And here are the top six streaming for the pit road entrance. Get the thing woed down to 55 miles an hour. Somehow Core ends up sixth by the time they get there. But during that is when our incident happened. As Christian Eckes and Thad Moffat get together, Eckes taking the hard hit into the Talladega wall. Yeah, everybody in front of Thad Moffat was coming to pit road. I think Thad either get, got off the gas to go with them or to go around them and get run into from behind by Christian Eckes. Live pit stops going on. This is Joe Graff Jr. in the 77, finally making his way in. It was Bobby Gerhardt with the Talladega win in the five car, the Lucas Oil machine that started us off. Trouble this off pit is road. Not good. Miscommunication there. Usually when the jack drops, if you're only going to change two tires, that's the time to go. Unless the crew chief says, okay, let me tell you when to go because we want to make sure we get it full of fuel. Cost him a little bit of time on pit road. Bobby Gerhardt, who inherited the second position, is on pit road with, with the issues. And when Moffitt was able to come out of the pits, he still was showing a lot of smoke. The 46 car is back on pit road as the team takes a look at that. We can get an update on Christian Eckes with Dylan Welch. Yeah, and Dave, he is out of the race car and uh, unfortunately much too early here. Christian, uh, you just saw the replay. What did you see? Uh, just kind of a victim of circumstance there. Man, I don't know. It's hard to tell. We were just in the wrong spot, wrong group. Um, you know, I knew it was going to happen eventually because they were all over the place. and uh, It's just unfortunate, man. I mean, we had such a fast number 15 JBL Camry and uh, you know, we came here with a lot of high hopes. You know, we missed the race to Salem. And really hurt us in the points, and uh, now we missed this one. It's even worse. So um, you know, we're just going to have to go home and learn from it and move on to Nashville. Yeah, not the rebound run they were looking for by any means. Christian Eckes done early here at Talladega. So disappointment for him, disappointment for Thad Moffitt, and still a lot of shuffling going on on the racetrack. We're going to step away from Talladega Super Speedway after this incident, but when we come back, we'll hope to have things sorted out and continue racing the General Tire 200 at Talladega. Tomorrow, we have got a great baseball doubleheader for you here, right here on FS1. First, the Indians take on Jose Altuve and the Astros. Then it's Christian Yelich leading the Brewers against Robinson Cano and the Mets. It all starts at 4 Eastern on FS1 and the Fox Sports app. Back in Talladega, it's the motorhome start to file in. Boy, this place is incredible, Phil. What a great weekend it's going to be for racing here at Talladega. Always look so forward to going to this racetrack. Xfinity tomorrow, the Monster Energy Cup guys on Sunday. There is a full slate of racing going on here in Alabama, and trust me, they love it here. General Tire 200 leaderboard, it looks like Mr. Gilliland has taken over the lead. As Sean Core, the 43, the man who has led 35 laps, is now being scored back in position 12. Let's check in with Dylan. Well, and Dave, the reason that Sean Core is in 12th right now, he got into the pit stall or into the pit road uh, a little slow on that green flag sequence and then slid the tires on his way in to compound that. So not only did he lose a handful of spots there on his pit entry, he uh, he made the problem worse, if you will, by sliding him when he was trying to get the car slowed down. So they had to come back down to pit road and change four tires a second time. Mm. And then that's uh, what has relegated him outside of the top 10. So kind of went from bad to worse in that sequence. But he knows he's got a good race car. It's just going to be a little bit tougher now for him to get back up towards the front. Phil, so many variables from the driver. We talk about the high-caliber crew chiefs, the spotters there on top. But there's also, you know, the crews you got to think about, guys that come over the wall that maybe aren't used to doing it a lot. Yeah, without a doubt. But a lot of these guys have really good, experienced crewmen. But I talked to a lot of the crew chiefs today, and their plan was just to put fuel only in here. So the tires will last forever. The only reason you would have to change tires is if you slide them. And that's what Sean Cord did. But he can overcome this. He's still up there in contention, and he has four fresh tires. Most of the guys that pitted under green at lap 40, like Todd Gill and those guys up front, didn't change tires. So the cars beginning to get sorted into their correct running order. When we come back, it will be Todd Gilliland leading them back to the green flag of the General Tire 200. 30 or less to go here in Talladega.
week-long trip to Costa Rica before the General Tire 200 is exactly what Todd Gilliland, the driver of the four car, needed. He said to get his head right. Let's face it, Phil, when it comes to super speedway racing, this is a guy in search of a little bit of confidence. Yeah, without a doubt here. It's been a bit of a struggle for him in his super speedway career. His first ever super speedway race was right here in the trucks last October. You can see he's... He was the youngest winner in the history of the Arca Series, but this was last year, just in October. That's him running second in the Ford truck. Ouch. That was Grant Enfinger, just got up off the bottom a little bit, and when he came back down, he got into the nose of Todd Gillen. That's what happened to Todd. Here Todd is right now racing with Brandon McReynolds in the top five with just two laps to go, trying to help Brandon McReynolds. This was not intentional. This is not a situation where he's trying to hurt Brandon McReynolds. Was trying to help him a little bit of bump drafting. It went wrong, though, for him. But he ended up finishing the second spot. He had a great run in Daytona. Guy under the microscope a little bit, like all these young up-and-comers races for Kyle Busch. He's had some outspoken words, but feeling that pressure a little bit, but he says it doesn't bother him too much. He's, he's got a great head on his shoulders, got a great family, he comes from a racing family. His grandfather, Butch, was a champion in the West Series. His, his dad's a winner in the Xfinity Series, a great racer. There's David Gillen right there. And, and still does a great job behind the wheel as well. But uh, Todd's going to get his share of wins, that's for sure. How about that DGR Crosley team, by the way? They're up to now seven developmental drivers in addition to David. They are indeed crafting the next generation stock car racer. Would we would we call David a, a de developmental driver? No. We wouldn't call him that, he, okay. He developed Oh, developed driver. driver. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> Let's check in with Dylan. And Dave, uh, another driver that had a problem on that last round of pit stops was Joe Graff Jr. They uh, had a miscommunication. Joe was expecting to go when the dr when the jack dropped, which is kind of what Phil alluded to. Crew chief Chad Bryant, though, wanted him to wait because they were trying to get the car full of fuel. So you'll see they come down, they take two tires, and Joe goes when the jack drops, and they weren't done fueling the car up. So a little bit of a miscommunication there that uh, resulted in a much lengthier pit stop than they were wanting. But uh, everything's been sorted out now, and Joe also just going to have a little bit of extra work to do to get back towards the front. How might that affect their race day strategy? We have only 29 to go, so no necessary need to come into the pits unless you need something. Oh, yeah, no, they're all good to go now. Everybody has enough fuel to get to the end. They have the tires they need to get to the end. And that, I think that was a situation where if I'm, if I'm a, a jack man and I'm, I know that he's going to go, he's going to wait for the fuel, I'm going to ease that jack down. I don't want that thing to slam down in his in automatic reactions to dump the clutch and go. Absolutely. Well, from 26, we are down to 16 cars on the lead lap. The 2020 schedule now starts to come into shape a little bit. Already looking forward to an extra year. Let's talk though more about this year. My apologies as we head out to Fairground Speedway in Nashville next week. All those races though highlighted in yellow, you can see them right here on the Fox Family Network. Yeah, next time we'll be on Fox here, right? May 23rd, right at Charlotte Motor Speedway. What a great week that is, the Coca-Cola 600 week. And then right back to back with a, the first of two races at Pocono. Charlotte, just a short five hour drive from here in Talladega. That's right. But you cannot beat the weather that we have today in Talladega, Alabama. Very seasonable for the fans sitting in the stands. That breeze still continuing to blow. Michael Self did say it's a north-south breeze. So as you come off a of four, you feel that extra little push that you get. The car doesn't want to fight as much. But when you go into turn one, you definitely feel that wind coming across your bow. Yeah, and you feel that headwind when you're going on the back stretch also. One to go, though, as the yellow will soon be replaced by green. Remind you of our onboard cameras. The points leader, Travis Brayton, and the Matrix Care onboard camera currently running in the number 14 spot. Yeah, on the lead lap, still in contention. Great job by him. Here's Gus Dean. This is the new Calgon onboard. Gus, another one of those guys. Remember, we talked about him being a former winner here. He's in the top 10 right now, running 10th. Fourth Talladega, lead lap all three times. He's currently there. 77, Joe Graff Jr. We continue to document the Fast Kids Club onboard camera driver. Currently running, despite all of those troubles, in the sixth spot. Local boy Brett Holmes right now running up in the top five. The general tire on board. Brett doing a nice job here, looking for his first finish here at his home track. And Riley Hurst, the monster energy machine. He's been a top five player all afternoon and continues to be as he will get the restart in position number three. Well, as we get ready to come to the green flag, it looks like Todd Gilliland and that team have selected the inside line. 
it may be a situation where he wants to race and have the 18 car behind him versus having the 20 car behind him a Brandon Lynn really haven't talked a lot about Ty Majeski, but he, he stayed around in the top two or three the entire race in that unsponsored Chad Bryan car really doing a nice job here first first trip to Talladega unbelievably talented racer basically wins on every circuit and every car he goes to I racing as well very, very He's talented. World class I racing race. That I racing is absolutely something else. A really nice start by the 22 of Ty Majeski. Dead even with Todd Gillen. He has no help, though. All the help's lined up on the inside. That means Riley Herbst will move into the number two spot. Brandon Lynn right behind him. And on the inside of them, 23 car. It's Brett Holmes, the Munford, Alabama boy local kid doing well positioning himself nicely Michael gonna... Self's got himself back in this race without a doubt I was going to say there's going to be a gap in front of the 77 for the 22 at time Majeski to get in he was able to do that now those teammates are nose to tail the 22 Majeski the 77 of Joe Graff Jr. Bobby Gerhardt stuck by himself in that third lane here's Sean Cora going, going through a little bit of the speedy dry John Core, guy that led so much of this race, now lined up on the outside of the 77 of Joe Graff. He has the 32 of Gustine pushing. Car off the track. It's Ooh. the 10 machine hard into the wall. That is Tommy Vi Jr., the current Bounty Rookie of the Year leader. New York racer, though, crashing out here on lap number 51. When Annette is down, that's a great sign. You can see all the damage to that car. Hard, hard contact with a safer barrier for Tommy By Jr. Good to see him moving around in there as well. But a tough break indeed for Vi. Get a chance to take a look back at this one. He was already in trouble there. That car just darted off the racetrack into the inside safer barrier. Tommy coming out of New York, a veteran dirt sports modified racer. Look at that wall give, Dave. This is his first Talladega. He did have a wide-eyed impression of this place, getting up to speeds in excess of 180 miles an hour in that Andy Hillenberg on car. Phil, no stranger to an incident here at Talladega. Those hits, they take a lick. They really are, and I, you know, thank goodness for the for the safer barriers. That absorbs so much energy, but it's still a hard hit now. You still feel it. Probably knocked the wind out of my guess. You can see him now trying to unbuckle his helmet. And it wasn't just a hit taken on one side, too, as you see damage on at least three sides of that machine. So again, caution is out as we've completed 51. Now there are 25 to go. It's setting itself up to be a tasty little sprint to the finish. <laughs> as Gilliland continues to lead. Watch the track workers get an opportunity here to begin the cleanup and get Tommy Vi out of the race car. That gives us an opportunity to step away, but when we come back, we will have more. We are racing the General Tire 200 in the Arkham and R Series today at Talladega Speedway. Ouch. Good news, Tommy Vi Jr. climbed out of his car here today at the General Tire 200 on a beautiful evening for Arca Menards Series Racing. There's still some work to be done. A moment, though, to congratulate and thank Talladega Super Speedway's Grant Lynch. Ron Drager presenting him with a lifetime membership card to Arca, retiring after 25 years doing such great work here. Oh, without a doubt, this racetrack has uh, really gone through a transformation, one of the premier facilities that we have. And... Uh, and it's been it's meant so much to the Arca series over the years as you mentioned at the very top of the show started here in 1969 with the Arca Menard series it's upgrades that continue as you get a look now at the frontline enterprises driver that is car number four his name is Todd Gilliland and he continues to lead now with 24 to go Dylan Welch and uh, let's chat with his dad and car owner, and that's David Gilliland. So we were just talking, uh, things looking good right now, but still plenty of time. You know that as well as anybody. Uh, anything can change in 24 laps at Talladega. Yeah, it is. It's Talladega Speedway racing, but uh, but we love it. Todd's doing a real good job. I got to thank Brett Stevens with Frontline Enterprises, um, Toyota. 
you know, everybody at DJ across here works so hard. Uh, he's got a real fast Toyota Camry right now, and I think he's got what he, what, what he needs to win the race. Now we just need a little bit of luck to go on our side. But uh, Todd's, Todd's uh, done a real good job, and, and just real, real proud, and um, just having a, a, a beautiful day and enjoying the weather and just uh, having a lot of fun out here. He doesn't have a lot of super speedway experience, so what kind of things has Todd done just to try and learn and get better at this discipline? Yeah, I mean, you know, it, it's different, and so, um, you know, we, we've we tried to use our k and and our um, ARCA program at DJR Crosley to try and help Todd out as much as we can, and, and all the drivers coming through our program. We're a driver development program, and, and uh, you know, we're, we're trying to help develop Todd just how uh, we're trying to help all the uh, drivers in our program, so I'm um, proud of what we've been able to do so far, and um, Todd's making us look good right now. Yeah, they're in a good spot right now. 24 or so to go, though. A lot can change between now and then. David mentioned Brent Stevens. He is the man from Frontline Enterprises. They buy, they clean up, they sell cars north of the border in Canada. And they're the man that put the funding in that machine. You know, Jim Tree now does so much great work for us. He, he told me that all throughout the pits today, Phil, that this is the driver that most wanted to work with throughout the day. Now they're going to have to work to get around him. Yeah, we, we watched early in the race. He had a fast car. And once he got up around the top five or six, he kept trying to make moves on the outside. Didn't have a whole lot of help. Now he has that track position. Let's see how he can manage that. And I just wonder if he has any kind of a working route, a, arrangement with maybe the 18 of Riley Herbst or somebody like that, maybe Brandon Lynn. Could you, it's hard to do it by yourself here. Another subplot we haven't really talked much about. We talked about Michael Self going for three in a row. He's very much in contention running eighth, but he's part of a Venturini Motorsports team that's won the first three. Hard to think about Bill, billing the entire Venturini crew, having never won here in Talladega. That is amazing. And, 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 and Bill, Big Bill, is our all-time track record holder here at Talladega. He qualified one time at 2.05 back in the in the. 90s, like 80s, it was, it was 80s, quite I guess. A while. Yeah. Yes, it was. He told a great story about that car, too. Never did get an opportunity to race it. Since back then, we had happy hour. It didn't turn out very happy for me. <laughs> he rolled it in the front stretch. But that was the days when he had the all-female pit crew. They had a sponsor obligation, a little pit demonstration with another car just down the road a little bit. And you know what? That car and that engine came back to the racetrack. He was able to at least race that machine when it came to the final race for the ARCA Series that year. So great storylines going on. You take a look at Brandon Lynn trying to exercise the demons of running out of fuel on the final lap, a race that probably easily could have been his. And this is back in 2017, the exact race we're talking about. They're driving for Mason Mitchell Motorsports, the 88 car. I thought, can you imagine on the very last lap, late race caution that meant he wasn't able to come in and get that fuel didn't have enough fuel in the tank and that is ultimately what cost him yeah justin haley goes to victory lane in his first ever super speedway race right after turning 18 years old wow. we said it was a proving ground for the young guns indeed the arca series is indeed that 51 different racers already checking in for our first four events this year but what a what a great series to really sh show your talents and and try to get noticed here. That's what these young drivers are doing, trying to get noticed, trying to move on up the ladder. We heard David Gillen talking about their driver development program. What better way to do it here at, at a place like Talladega for Todd, as well as Natalie Decker, who unfortunately had some had some issues. Still on the racetrack right now, but four laps behind. We've got the five-star composite body on the Ilmore engine underneath the hood. And, and talking with Ron Drager, did want to point to a couple of guys, Travis Braden and his entire team, three full-time employees out of Indianapolis, Brandon McReynolds' team led by Mike Bursley. They work out of Michigan with only two full-time employees. It proves that it can work. You don't have to have the big funded teams, the big number of crew guys like the Venturinis do. You can compete out here and win. Yeah, without a doubt here. And that's what this has always been a grassroots series. It's headquartered in Toledo, Ohio. I grew up in Detroit, Michigan. My entire Just lifetime, I've known about the ARCA Racing Series and how important it was. My brother was a two-time champion in this series back in the late 60s. So lights are off on the pace car. Flagman showing one to go. Gilliland and Herbst are in first and second place. Brandon Lynn's been in the third spot inside the top five all day long. Boy, how about that 23 car? Would Munford, Alabama just go crazy? <laughs> Maybe most of Munford's probably at the racetrack today. It's a very, very small town located yeah. right here in Talladega County. How about Todd Gillen now is going to decide to take the outside, so he will have Brett Holmes lined up behind him. 
What if there's a working relationship maybe with the 18 of Gibbs? Is it a situation where the 18 will let the four go and then pull in front of him so they can line up? No doubt some deals being made up in the spotter stand right now. So when that green flag comes out, there will be just 20 laps to go. Just 20 to go. One of the unique things about this racetrack, we mentioned the starting line tucked all the way into the entrance of turn one past the trioval. You've also got a 2.66 mile track, so that extra lap takes a little time to get back to the flag stand, doesn't <laughs> about it? About two and a half minutes, usually. <laughs> But this one figures to be very entertaining. Let's update some other racers. We talked about Sean Core, and he's led 35 laps right now. Sean Core, big score back in the 15th spot. He's fallen off the pace. Mr. Self has gotten himself back into contention. Michael, who had problems, got shoved off the racetrack and fell back. He finds himself seventh. And for more on the front row of Gilliland and Herbst, let's check in once again with Dylan. And Phil, you were correct. The plan is for Riley Herbst to let Todd Gilliland down in front of him just to try and uh, allow those two to work together. So that's the plan. We'll see if it uh, plays to fruition here when we go back green. That is a good plan. You can see both of those cars with Camry logos on the front of them. If you look inside the car, you can see the Ford driver with his hand out the window already. Wait, 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 now go. Yeah, he's telling Brett Holmes when I'm to go, too. Yeah. Holmes with a good start, paying attention. Does he have enough grunt to get around the 18? It worked just like they planned it. Brett Holmes has a little bit of help on the outside. He has Joe Graff Jr., the 77. They need a little bit more help, though. Here comes Gustine to try to join them on the outside. Big freight train on the inside. Just a few cars tucked up on the outside. Mumford saying, get up here, get to my rear bumper, give me a shove. But he's going backwards. Somehow Gus Dean had a hole to get in on the inside. He jumped in behind Andy Sice in the 0-2. Look at Michael Self. You know when you see the green dinosaur on the side of the car? That was the man that won the last two races. Self up to fifth. He's got the 22 of Majeski right in front of him. Then it's Brandon Lynn, Wiley Herbst, and now Todd Gilliland, who's led his 15th lap of the day. Single file right now. These guys can't say, stay single file forever here. Inside of 20 laps to go. See Sean Cor all the way at the back, who's been so strong, led 35 laps, all the way at the, just about at the back of this lead draft. If you go to the one and only practice, though, Phil, earlier today, Michael Self did have the quickest car, better than 181 miles an hour. He may need all of that if he wants to go three in a row. But at least he's positioned himself now. Oh, without a doubt. Remember, he was 25 seconds behind before that first caution flag we saw. Who's going to be the first one to move out of line? That's, that's the question. You don't want to go too soon right now if you're Brandon Lynn or Ty Majeski. You don't want to go too soon and it not work, and you get shuffled all the way back to the back of this line. Just like Brett Holmes has. He's fallen all the way back to the 13th spot after having such a great starting spot on that restart. If you look ahead of Gillen, you see there is a lap car that will figure into the equation here very shortly. Force the move. Yeah, they'll definitely have to make their way around the lap car. Hopefully the lap car will stay on the bottom and they'll just be able to drive by him as they approach him. I wouldn't call that the bottom. He's close to the bottom. Through the trial, that's where they catch the 06 car of Con Nicolopoulos. See how quick those guys want to try to get down in line. Brian Doza, the 57, took a little bit longer to get around that 06. See if that cost him anything. 17 laps to go. The general tire 200 leaderboard still shows. Todd Gilliland leading with Herbs. Lynn Majeski behind him. Don't count out Michael Self yet, though. We race to the checkers in Talladega. The Arkham Art Series may be an Ohio-based
race sanctioning body that is 67 years old. But as we welcome you back to the General Tire 200, it is another 18-year-old that fronts the field here in our second super speedway race. Harrison Burton wins at Daytona right now. Todd Gilliland just 14 laps away from victory lane. Have a bit of about an eight-car breakaway right now. You can see the 32 of Gus Dean is the eighth car in line. A little bit of a gap back to Grant Quinlan, that black number 30 car. Those four cars right there need to stay in line as tightly as they can to see if they can make a move. When those guys start fanning out and go too wide, then it'll bring that second pack up there to them, but they need to stay as close as they can until that happens. I don't think they can catch them on their own. I'm going to put you in the driver's seat right now. What are you focusing on if you're anybody inside of the top eight right now? I'm just right now, I, I've got a plan with my spotter and my crew chief. I'm trying to work together with some other teams to get some more help because I don't think anyone's going to be able to pull out of the line by themselves and make anything happen. It's going to take two or three cars, maybe even more. So that's, that's what I'm working at right now. If, if I'm a crew chief, I'm running up and down pit road. If I'm a spotter, I'm going and talking to other spotters. We mentioned Gilliland coming in at 18. It's Riley Herbs, 20. Right behind him in third is Brandon Lynn. Lynn coming in at 23. It truly is a young man's game today. Without a doubt, Todd Majeski, another young man. Probably one of the more experienced guys we have right now is, is Michael Self in the 25 car. Your point leader, Travis Brady, right on board with him. He's having a very good point scoring day. Another solid, solid day for that Dan Gloss led team. You saw him looking forward to Michael Self with more on the 22 of Majeski. Chad Bryant Racing Group. Uh, of course, he worked with Cunningham Motorsports, which was the predecessor to Chad Bryant Racing, and specifically with crew chief Paul Andrews in 2017. Now, this year, he's been in more of an advisory role. He tire tested with the team at Michigan. He was in an advisory role at Salem, said that that really helped Joe Graff Jr. and their other drivers just kind of get comfortable and, and understand what they were looking for in a race car. Ty has a lot of experience on the short tracks around the Midwest and uh, is taking advantage of this ARCA start here here this afternoon and uh, he's having a little problem right now hearing his spotter which in the closing laps of the race you never want to have to deal with but so far he's content to just ride and forth and hopefully that uh, someone else will pull out of line and he can tuck in line behind him and go with him to the front. Seymour Wisconsin is where Majeski comes from but he's on the fast track to move it wherever he wants to. Yeah maybe Majeski and, and Michael Self in the 25 car maybe they can get together and make a move. Laps winding now down to 11 to go. Down the big, long back stretch. Some drivers tell you, you got plenty of time to do whatever you need to do. Get a drink, get a new tear off, pick a poppy seat out of your teeth. Yeah. But I don't think anybody in this front pack's doing that right now. There's seven of those guys looking in the mirror. Gus Dean's not looking in the mirror that much, but the other seven are. They've really opened it up in front of that ninth place car, Grant Quinlan now. He's over three, almost three and a half seconds behind this group. Well, I know I heard a lot about patience, but race car drivers at some point are going to get a little antsy. Somebody's going to have to make a move as we are now 10 laps to go. I guarantee Raleigh doesn't want to finish second. Brandon doesn't want to finish third. Ty doesn't want to finish fourth. <laughs> Somebody's going to have to do something here soon. But they have to balance that. They don't want to finish eighth either. They have to balance that aggression, and they have to have help, Dave. Riley's been to victory lane in the Arca Menard Series. He won at Pocono a couple years ago. Went through last year, had some good runs, didn't get to victory lane. Now he's sharing this car with Ty Gibbs. Or would he love to get a win for the four Todd Gilliland, a team that only a week and a half ago decided to enter. That's a little short on time as far as David Gilliland's concerned, but yet this team was able to get everything in proper order, and right now he continues to lead. Remember, they had minimal damage with this car from Daytona. He finished second. They did get in that incident with Brandon McReynolds, but very minimal damage. So they wiped it off and put a little new nose wrap on the front, and here they are. Dad looking on. 
and his son, who is the youngest ARCA race winner ever back in Toledo 2015, when he was 15 years old. I mean, like 15 years old in a day or something like that. Two days, exactly. Was it two days? Yeah. <laughs> Look at the nervous energy. Right leg. You get that way when your son races? Nah, not too much, really. I mean, he's never raced a Talladega, though. That might be a different story. Good point. Top eight remain the same. From Gilliland on back to Gus Dean, separated by eight tenths of a second. Who's going to make the move, and when are they going to make the move? I'm sure there's been a plan being formulated down there on pit road or on the spouter stand or both. Got a lap car coming at us. Brad it's Smith. the 48 of Brad Smith. Brad's having a solid run. He's on the lead lap. He, he'll go a lap down here when the lead pack goes by, but running in the 17th spot. Brad Smith with some history here. A couple of incidents, of course, racing with James Harvey Hilton the last couple, three, four years. Fortunate incident here, so that was weighing heavily on his mind this week. Yeah, He's we, having a good run. We lost James and his son, James Jr., on the way home from this race last year. Top eight quickly get by the lap car, and we're under seven to go now. One thing that could make it hard to make a move, Dave, is, is if the fastest car is the guy in the lead. As you mentioned, a lot of the guys in the garage area really felt like that four car may be the best car here in the draft. When you have the fastest car out in front, that makes it a little bit harder to make a move. So if it is Riley, how close does he have to be? And he'll probably wait till the bitter end before he shows his nose. But how close? What's the strategy? And how do you even attempt to get around? Well, I think you have to have help. You know, if, if you don't have any help, if you don't have any help lined up, if, if Brandon Lynn's not going to go with you, then you wait till the very last minute and try to pull out a line and try to disrupt the air and make something happen that way. Down to six. You talk about patience. Every one of these eight guys are showing a lot of patience right now. I'm not. I'm sitting on the edge of my seat. <laughs> Wanting to know who and when, just like everybody else. Gilliland protecting that yellow line, saying if you want to do it now, you got to go to the outside. Yeah, that double yellow line is his friend right now. Meanwhile, Dad sits poised. In a situation like this, Phil, is there a lot of chatter going on on the radio between spotter and driver, or are they just kind of letting Todd do his thing? I think I think the spotter will probably be letting him know if the 18 does anything different. I think as long as he stays in line there, I think that, that the, probably the talk would be minimal. But if he starts moving around, then then, then they'll get busy. It's Gilliland in the four, Herbst in the 18. Lynn in the 20, Majeski in the 22, Self in the 25, the way they've been since we restarted this race on lap 57. Inside of five to go now at the Talladega Super Speedway. See if these lap cars will stay down on the bottom of the racetrack. Looks like everybody's going to be able to make it by. Scott Melton, D.L. Wilson, go another lap down. Front pack are on a freight train run right now with more on the 20. Here's Dylan. Well, and Dave, they're telling Brandon Lynn on the radio that if Ty Majeski, who is right behind him, starts to back up towards the rear, the front bumper of Michael Self, that Brandon should do the same. That's a, a clear sign that they're trying to build a run. So we'll just keep our eye on that because if the 22 starts to back up, the 20 is probably going to back up with him, and then the 18 and the 4 could be out to lunch. And that's a great point, too, because if you're running around there nose to tail, you cannot just pull out a line and pass anybody. You have to have momentum. And how you create momentum, you have to have a gap and then get a push. Inside of four to go as we work through turns three and four and back onto the trial. A start finish line that is not located in the center of that trial. It is in the entrance to turn number one. We've had races over the years that the guy leading right there in the center of the trial would have won the race but he didn't win when they got down here to the start finish line now three laps a race that's featured photo finishes two of the last three years are we going to have another one it is certainly set up for just such a finish It's 
It's almost as if I can hear my heart beating in my <laughs> chest right now. We have some, we've got a trouble. And now this will change everything. Thomas Prater looks like, is it, I don't know if that's the right front tire or maybe some sort of an engine issue. You see some. It'll change things if the caution comes out, but the green is still out right now. He's down off the racetrack. I think we'll remain green unless spotters are on the racetrack see some fluid. And we're down to under five miles now. Look at the gap between the 18 and the 20. They're setting him up. Can they get him to do it? They're going to have to get together and work. Look at the 20. It looked like he almost put the brakes on there to try to create a gap. Remember, most of these young drivers have never done this before. They've never been in this position. There's Travis Braden on the outside of Michael Self. And this time by the start-finish line. It will be one lap to go. 2.66 miles to see if Todd Gillen can be the second consecutive 18-year-old to win a super speedway race in 2019. All right, Brandon Lynn, Tom Majeski have the gap. Look at Michael Look at Self. Self on the outside. That might take that move away from those guys. That's going to disrupt those guys running together. For the final time down the back stretch. Michael Self is being shuffled out of the mix now. It's a long way to go to that start-finish line. Can anybody make a run on Todd Gilliland? The 18 and 20 cars are going to try to hook up and do just that. This one's going to be a fun to the finish line. There's going to be no room in the bottom. He's going to have to go around the outside. He faced to the outside. Not going to happen. Crosses the start-finish line and grabs the win for DGR Crosley. An 18-year-old, we said, that needed a confidence boost. The youngest winner in ARCA history, though, had been having his troubles on super speedway races as of late. He may be 18, but he looked like a veteran right there. He did an outstanding job there. Just about a perfect race for Todd Gillen. Hugs around as there'll be a big time in North Carolina tonight as Todd Gilliland is the winner of the General Tire 200. Don't go anywhere, though. We'll be back with more. Todd Gilliland celebrating the General Tire 200 win today at Talladega Super Speedway. Would you like to be 18 again? Do it all over one more time? Yeah. yeah. What a job done, though, by that team. Eddie DeHunt, the entire GGR Crosley team. You saw a patient father, a happy mother, and a beautiful way to wrap up this day. It sets up a great weekend with the Xfinity gang. Into the racetrack tomorrow, the Monster Energy men on Sunday. It's Todd Gillen has made it to victory lane. I don't think he has a mark on that car. Slightly different outcome than Daytona. Mentioned before, a team that only a week and a half ago decided to come to Talladega. I'd say that was a pretty good move. Yeah, good call. Man with diverse schedule as well. Racing in the truck series. You know he's destined for even bigger and better things beyond that. A two-time k and champion on, out west. You know, we talked about how this was one of the most talked about drivers this weekend, and they're going to be talking about this one for quite a while. Once he took the lead, Todd Gilliland wouldn't give it away. And the 11th hour decision to come race at Talladega pays off for the DGR Crosley team and Todd Gilliland. Well, hey, those, it looked like you had it pretty well wrapped up. And then those last few laps, those guys get a good run on you like they did. How, uh, how much did Eddie DeHaan as your spotter help you in those closing laps? That was incredible. Um, all around, such an amazing race. Um, you know, being back with DJR Crosley, this this car was incredible. Uh, you know, they, they couldn't catch me even um, doing all they could. So, um, got to thank Frontline Enterprises, Toyota, obviously. 
Menards for the series and um, you know General Tire for their great tires. But uh, you know, just like I said, all the credit goes to these guys. That was incredible. Um, you know, we were going to destroy them at uh, Daytona, and I'm so happy I got to uh, come back here. It's kind of last minute, but uh, like I said, I, it's been a long time since I've won, and this trophy's amazing. So. Um, I'm just super pumped. A lot has kind of been made this year about you being on the hot seat. How good does it feel just to silence that for a moment and celebrate a victory? Absolutely. No matter how small or big a victory, it's it's huge, you know. Uh, my confidence has probably never been lower going into this race, but I have so much confidence in these guys. Um, they need to work on my truck program a little bit, myself and, and my whole team. So that's what it's all about is teamwork. and. Um, it's, uh, hopefully I can take something over there, and, um, and now we just need to win a truck race or, or a few of them, and um, you know, those are way more important. Enjoy it. Congratulations. Thank you. Todd Gilliland, your winner at Talladega. And while the celebration continues for Todd in victory lane, a quick report that Tommy Vite Jr. has been released from the infield care center. He's okay after his hard hit, but we are not done here at Talladega. We'll be back with more to wrap up the General Tire 200 in just a moment. The General Tire 200 for the Arkham and Art Series started today. Todd Gilliland was in the 15th position. But when it's all said and done, he finds his way to victory lane. Here's Dylan Welch with more. And Riley Herbst comes home in the second spot this evening. Uh, those closing laps they're uh, looking back on, is there anything you think you could have done differently just to close the gap that much more? Man, I don't know. Uh, second just sucks really, really bad. But I can't thank everybody at Monster Energy enough. Uh, Joe Gibbs Racing provided me a really fast toy to Camry. Um, I thought we had a run there at the end, but Todd's car was really fast, and, you know, that's all we came home with in second. Today it seemed like uh, things were relatively calm. I mean, that nobody really ever stepped out of line and kind of stirred up anything. Was that how it felt from your seat? Yeah, I was kind of happy with that too um, because these lap, this race is 76 laps long and uh, you got to get to the end to win the race. So I didn't want everybody to wreck in the beginning and drag out 80 laps of caution or whatever. So I was happy that we got to race a little bit. Uh, sex we were single file for the fans, but all in all, it was a good day for the 18 and the points. Good day for sure. Riley Herbst comes home second. General Tire unofficial results continue to scroll at the bottom of the screen. Some guys had a great day like this man did. Some guys struggled today like Sean Eckes, Mr. Moffitt, and, and the gang. It happens. It's a day of racing. Yeah, Christian Eckes is going to have to fight back from, uh, from missing Salem in this this uh, finish. Basically <laughs> finished last year, but uh, there's a lot of racing left. He's a multi-time winner. He, uh, he'll, he'll fight his way back into this championship hunt. That trophy has an anvil on top of it. It's <laughs> tough for Todd Gillen to pick that one up. <laughs> it's we, heavy. As we go back with more, uh, some other finishers with Dylan. And with Brandon Lynn, who rounds out our podium, started on the pole third today. Solid day, but I know you probably wanted to win. Felt like you had a car to win. How would you evaluate the day today? Yeah, I think we had a great car. Um, I think uh, we, were, we were hoping to get a run there at the end, and it just didn't happen. And, you know, we ended up where we were at. So we'll take it. Uh, I can't thank these Venerini guys enough for uh, putting together such a great car this weekend. Um, so hopefully we can uh, get some stuff together to run some more races the rest of the year. When they're telling you to back up to the car that's behind you to try and build that run, how tough is that really to do to, to know how much you need to back up? Yeah, it's tough. I mean, you just got to you just got to feel it out and hopefully you're keeping the car behind you close to you and not letting him get too far back because um, you want to get that run together on the on the cars in front of you. So uh, we did what we could and it just didn't pan out at the end. Good day for these guys, though. Third for Brandon Lynn here at Talladega. Ultimately, though, when you scored at home, 25 disappointed drivers, including Christian Eckes, who gets that 26th and final spot. Only one man celebrates, though. We've got more action. Talladega Super Speedway. It's just a moment. Look at the unofficial point standings in the Arkham Menard series where the top seven drivers in competition today. Chandler Smith, Harrison Burton, Ty Gibbs missing out. Big hit for Christian Eckes, but a nice move by Michael Self, who came back not only from the Daytona mishap, but going backwards early in this race today. Yeah, without a doubt. Uh, he found himself over a half a lap behind, but that caution flag put him right back in contention, fought back to a top five. That new point leader standing by with Dylan. And that is Michael Self, and uh, a day that kind of started out a little rocky for you guys, but able to, to rebound to a top five. And, and you said sometimes that's the days you need at a place like this, a fifth place run. How would you sum up your day? Yeah, fifth place is definitely better than a 31st, like Daytona was. But uh, my day flashed before my eyes coming off four there, I'm like lap six or something. I, my God, I was mad. Um, didn't want to see that. But I think a good day in the Sinclair Royal Toyota, you know? 
you come to these places, you can't come here and expect to win. You can have a good car, but you just have to hope things fall in your place. So i um, happy to come out the points lead. That's pretty cool. Now we can go focus on Nashville, where our short track program's obviously been pretty strong the last couple weeks. Excited to get back with that with these 25 guys. But, um, you know, it was, it was fun. Thanks to General Tire for putting this race on and for the support they give the series, as always. Um, they give us great products. They do a great job supporting the series, Menards and all you guys. And obviously, thanks to Sinclair for, for this and you guys for the coverage, everyone for tuning in out there. Um, hope it was a good one to watch. After the Daytona you guys had, it, how good does it feel just to come to another super speedway and just log a solid day and, and bring the car back in one piece? Well, it doesn't feel good to come to another super speedway. Sure. You don't want to come to another super speedway, right? It's, it's too stressful, but it does feel good to come out with a top five finish. There was definitely, uh, there at the end, I was content with riding fifth. Um, just knowing that it was going to be a points day and knowing what the day can be here. Obviously, you want to win, but we've got, uh, I don't know, what, 15 or 16 more races ahead of us. Where These guys have been building really fast cars, and we'll go focus on winning those. And um, those were just a little bit more in the driver's hands. He's your new points leader in the Mark Menard series as well. Michael Self, fifth today at Talladega. A streak of two consecutive wins gets busted. The Venturinis are still over here at <laughs> Talladega. That's a story we were following. They were trying to win four in a row with their racers, but that was a streak ended by that man. Todd Gilliland is getting an opportunity now to go talk a little bit more about this race. Go all the way back to the front and start recapping what was a very interesting day of racing here at the Talladega Super Speedway. Yeah, it was fun. It, uh, you know, qualifying's a little bit different format here. It, uh, you know, they do group qualifying. That's one of the reasons that Todd Gillen started all the way back in the 15th position because of how his group managed that qualifying session. But uh, we, he showed uh, right off the bat that he was awfully fast. We'll have that recap for you in just a moment. Ty Majeski, though, is standing by with Dylan. And he came home in the fourth spot today after being out of an ARCA car for over a year. So uh, not a great place to make your return, if you will, at Talladega, a place uh, that can test the nerves for sure. But a uh, solid fourth today. How would you sum up your day? Yeah, it was a really solid day. Everyone at Chad Bryan Racing uh, brought me a really good Ford uh, here this week, and they worked their tails off this week, uh, pulling a couple all-nighters to get here. So um, it, was, it was exciting to give them a good finish. Uh, we executed all day. Uh, that second-to-last restart just didn't go our way. Uh, we were on the top lane and uh, didn't get a push from behind and had to had to settle for fourth or fifth in line there, and uh, that's where we stayed. The, the 18 and the 4 were the best two cars, and uh, when the best two cars get out front, it's hard to materialize uh, runs uh, against them. So um, all in all, a good solid day. Um, we're running for the owner's championship, so uh, it was a good points day from that standpoint, and uh, hopefully we'll take this momentum into Charlotte. What needed to happen there those last laps or so just in order for you guys to, to catch the 18 and the 4? You know, I, I don't know. Uh, obviously, it helps when you have a bigger pack. Uh, I think we only had six or seven cars in that pack, and um, that makes it tougher to, to formulate runs, and um, just need some help from behind and uh, to get us all on the same page. It, it also makes it difficult when there's four or five Toyotas in the top five, and you're the one forward, so uh, you know if you make a move, you're going to get hung out to drive, but um, all in all, it was a good point say for us yeah good day no doubt fourth for time majeski very analytically you can tell that man's going to be a very great racer in the days to come already is well now we get an opportunity for that race recap we take you back to the start the 20 car of brandon lynn took the lead but that was only briefly because gus dean came a calling for the first four laps the 32 car led yeah gus dean was awfully strong but keep an eye on that 43 car sean core jumped out front there and led for 35 laps and it was a very comfortable 43. Michael Self looking for three in a row. It's positioned nicely until getting into the 77 car. The two of them get contact, forces him off the racetrack, but he was able to bounce back. Yeah, that's what we talked about. Put him over a half a lap behind, but we end up getting a caution flag here. Another close moment there as they were trying to lap a car. Here they are coming to pit road for green flag pit stops. These were executed well. Sean Core was a little slow getting to pit road. But some of the other guys coming to pit road didn't execute quite as well. And as that was happening, the next thing you know, you get Thad Moffat turned around into Christian Eckes. Eckes up into the wall hard. It's back-to-back -to -back tough races. Illness in Salem wrecked out today in Talladega. Good restart, though. The two Toyotas working together on the bottom. The four of Gill and the 18 of Hurst. Tommy By Jr. hard into the inside safer barrier. Fortunately, he's okay not be the bounty rookie of the year leader in the clubhouse there but that final restart coming the four car took the outside riley says go ahead sneak in front of me get down to that bottom lane go win yourself a race and that's exactly what that dgr driver did and then riley in hindsight says maybe i shouldn't have let him in there maybe we shouldn't have had that plan but that was the proper way to do it but the four car was just too strong for those guys to do anything with the race within a race as david gilliland celebrates up on the box 
the opportunity now after this great celebration to take a look at our general tire super speedway challenge results owners getting involved as well and for the venturini clan named take the number one spot for the first three races there's a new leader in the clubhouse it happens to be david gilliland he comes it's in got 30 points it's kind of a point championship within the season all the super speedway races there it is right there david gillen the owner of that four car 10 points ahead right now of the Benjarini car number 20. It's a general tire race as it was in Daytona. There's double points awarded for that. So that's how you suddenly vault up into the lead. Eight races total, but just one of the many battles that go on. How about selfies? Check that out on Twitter <laughs> or Facebook later. Look what I found. An anvil with a trophy on it. Well, the next race on the schedule for the Arkham Menard Series is Saturday from Fairground Speedway in Nashville. Check it out on MTV. Check there. Place for local times and listings. Our next ARCA race on Fox Sports 1 will be in Charlotte. Charlotte Motor Speedway. That's going to be a big weekend. It is going to be a lot of fun there. Coca-Cola 600 week. For Phil Parsons, Dylan Welch, and our entire FS1 crew, I'm Dave Reef. Coming up next, stay tuned for some Friday Nitro Live from Charlotte as we go four wide racing. The NHRA.